Now, I mentioned that MAC addresses or media access control addresses operate at OSI layer two. What is this? What is a MAC address? I'm not talking about the McDonald's Big Mac for sure. What I'm talking about is a hardware address or a burned in address that is encoded permanently in the firmware on every network interface card. And remember that a TCP IP host isn't necessarily just a full size computer or a laptop. It can be your smartphone, your cable modem at home, any device that's network capable and has a network interface card is going to have a MAC address associated with that card. It's a globally unique identifier and it's meant to be a permanent address that doesn't change. An IP address, on the other hand, is a logical address and can very easily change. For instance, my iPhone has one IP address when I'm at work in my office and I'm connected to my router, my Wi-Fi router, or if I'm out and about using my AT&T LTE service, I'm gonna pick up another IP address. They're subject to change at any time. Now, it is true that you can easily spoof or change a MAC address, but officially, each network interface has one and only one permanent address that you can find perhaps literally on the device on a sticker. You might actually find the MAC address printed on the card permanently, and you can certainly retrieve MAC addresses through software. I'll show you that in our demo. The numbering system for MAC addresses is different from what we use in terms of base 10 decimal. We use a larger number system, hexadecimal or base 16, because MAC addresses are a lot longer than most decimal numbers that we deal with. The base 16 means that the first 10 places places go from 0 to 9 and then places from 11 to 16 are represented as A, B, C, D, E, F. Here's an example of a MAC address. A MAC address is 48 bits long. You might need to memorize that for your exam. You do want to walk into the exam having a mental catalog of some of these statistics. And 48 bits means 48 binary digits, zeros or ones. Because a whole string of 48 zeros and ones is a huge ginormous number that nobody wants to write down, MAC addresses use the hexadecimal notation system, and you'll notice that you get a string of hex digits. You get one, two, three, four, five, six groups of hex numbers with each section representing eight bits. As a matter of fact, each hex digit is represented in binary with four places. If that's a little confusing to you, you can check the Pluralsight library I give you in the course notes, some heads up on that. But all you need to know for the A+, is that MAC addresses are represented in hexadecimal, they're 48-bit addresses, and the first half, which is the first three groupings of two hex digits, is going to be specific to the vendor of that network interface card. The IEEE is the worldwide holder of the MAC address space and vendors, if let's say we decide to go into business to build network interface cards for smartphones, we will apply to the IEEE for an organizationally unique identifier, a prefix that we'll add to all of our MAC addresses. The benefit of the OUI is that it prevents a collision from taking place such that an Intel NIC won't conflict with a Netgear NIC because the OUIs are different. The OUI standardization also makes it easier from a network management point of view because you can target network policy based on that OUI to hit only specific make and model network cards that you know are associated with particular hosts. So the last 24 bits are vendor assigned. Ultimately, every TCP IP host will have a globally unique MAC address.